This week on The Wire, rising rates don't burst markets, vacancy rates fall to 10 year low, and most protected against rate hike. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate. You can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment and more. Kicking it off with our top story for this week, rising rates don't burst markets. So concerns that future interest rate rises will dampen property market activity have been quashed by Property Investment Professionals of Australia, that's PIPA Research. Now the PIPA analysis of five periods of increasing cash rate movements since 1994 shows house prices continue to rise even after rates rise. Now PIP Chairman Peter Kulzos says it's usually affordability constraints, economic conditions, and consumer sentiment that affect property prices. He says there's been a lot of speculation in the past 18 months that the historic low interest rates in Australia are what is driving property prices so high. Kulzos says there are clearly a number of factors at play, including some buyer hysteria, but one of the main reasons for our booming market conditions is easier access to credit, which was simply not the case two years ago when rates were also low. And now for our next story, vacancy rates fall to 10 year low. So the national vacancy rate has hit a 10 year low, the new figures revealing it has dropped to 1.6%, but with six of the eight capital cities well below that level. Now, SKM research, I should say, figures revealed the total number of vacancies in October was just under 57,000 properties, which was just down from 59,000 in September. Now, vacancy rates are lowest in Hobart at just 0.4%, while they're below 1% in Perth, Adelaide, Canberra, and Darwin, and slightly above 1% in Brisbane. Now, Sydney, 2.6%, and Melbourne, 3.3%, have the highest vacancies, but they're still higher in the CBDs, with 7.5% in Sydney and 8% in Melbourne. Now, SQM Managing Director Louis Christopher says the last time the national vacancy rate dropped so low was in March 2011. He says vacancy rates are still very tight in most regional centres, and some towns have no vacancies at all. And now for our final story of the week, most protected against rate hike. So the Reserve Bank of Australia doesn't think an interest rate rise will have a detrimental impact on borrowers across Australia. Now, RBA Assistant Governor for Economics, Lucy Ellis, told a parliamentary hearing that most people pay more off their mortgage than is required, particularly recently as many households have been spending less during COVID lockdowns. Now, she says people often put that money into offset and redraw mortgage accounts. So if rates do eventually rise, they won't have to raise their repayments because they've already paid off more than they needed to. Now, whilst she doesn't think that there is an overall shortage of housing in Australia, Ellis says there are some things that can be done to make the market more responsive. Now, these include speeding up planning systems to reduce general inefficiencies, improving transport infrastructure, and lowering the cost of new construction. Well, guys, they are the top stories happening this week. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week, guys, and remember, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, that's action. Thanks a lot.